being that even though we are in the soul of Sheikh and we are in worship, still we are not understanding that part. Still we trust in you. Still we don't understand how we can breathe, not fall into that and believe our Sheikh no matter what, that we know our Sheikh. Whatever he says, we don't trust him. How do we reduce that? When you are not seeing yourself equal to your share, when you start seeing yourself, when you start seeing yourself higher than your share, then you will never be able to have love and have that salvation. When you look at your share and you're saying, ah, he's just a hoja, sitting, leading prayers, organizing a couple of things when you don't accept him as a share, then you will never have that submission. When you start questioning and not asking for answers, you understand? You may question, people have questions, but you're not asking for an answer. You're just happy with a question and then shaitan will put another question, another question, another question, another question, another question until everything is gone. You just filled up with questions, but you're smiling in front of us. You're kissing our hands and our feet. You're saying all your words on top of our head. When you're doing all of that, but you're not looking for an answer. When you allow shaitan to trick you, then you're not going to be. When anything that your sheikh is doing that you don't like and you are more tight inside and you don't look for an answer, for an explanation, then all those doubts and everything will just become a cancer. So how do you reach to that? To that level of submission? It takes years. It takes years. First, very simple thing, if you have a question, <coughs> ask. If you have something, find an answer for it. First step, everyone who turns away from us, first thing they do, what is that? What is that? They stop interacting, they separate themselves. They separate themselves from me, then they separate themselves from each other, separate themselves from the Jamaat. You look to them, they are the most humble people. The separation. Shaitan was the first to separate. First it is, oh I'm so bad, these people are good. I'm the worst one, these people are good. You understand? That's not honest also. If you think you're so bad, you're going to ask for forgiveness. If you think you've done nothing wrong, then you're not going to come close to ask for forgiveness. If you say, well, I'm saying it in my heart, I'm not saying it by my tongue, then you have arrogance on top of stubbornness. You understand? We're not living in a spiritual world, you're sending things. When you are seeing that where Sheikh is doing something to you and you don't understand, you ask. When you don't ask, now you keep everything. You don't want to find an answer, but you're always trying to find an answer inside. Who is going to give you sohbat? You're not asking from people, you're not asking from your shaykh. It's only you. But you've already disconnected from your shaykh because you're doubting him now. Who are you going to ask? Doubting him, it doesn't just become like that. First, it's, it's not just... First, you have to say, oh, why is he doing that? Mm. Doubting him doesn't mean, oh, I don't want him. No, it begins very small steps. Shaitan first comes as your best friend, not as an enemy. He puts that seed over there, you don't take it out, you let it grow, it becomes a tree, impossible for it to take out then. So you start separating. First you say, I'm the worst one. Yeah, it's not honest. If you're the first one, if you're the worst one, you're going to ask. Then you start hating yourself. Why am I the worst one? I'm not the worst one. These are the worst ones. You understand? 
Later you say, I'm all still okay with the shake, but these ones are bad. Then you say, the ones around him are bad. And then later on, the shaykh is looking and smiling. Because once you start inviting shaitan there, then you do one thing wrong, another thing wrong, another thing wrong. You understand? Because then your bayat is very, very thin at that time. That you say, we say, hold on tightly, you start letting go. Then when that happens, just takes one little thing, something to happen, because you keep doing wrong things. One little thing, and the shaykh says, stop. Then they will start screaming, as if we have put them into the meat grinder and we have ground them, as if. We haven't even done that. What's going to happen when we put them to the meat grinder? We didn't do anything, they're already calling us shaitan. Same people who kiss our feet, now calling us shaitan. It's normal. You understand? Are we taking lesson? People or not? Should take lesson. What did he do? What should he have done? Where am I now? What am I doing? What should I be doing? It is not the easy things. It is the hard things. It is not when your shaykh is smiling at you. That is the test. It is when the shaykh is not smiling at you. Then what do you do there? So many, they become, they sulk. You understand? They sulk. Yeah, sort of understand it too. We went through all those phases also. <laughs> but if we tell them, what are the 12 characteristics that saints and prophets, they share with a dog? They'd be quick to say what it is. They know. They've seen these dogs. Maybe your own dogs. What is that? That the master will kick the dog. He'll cry, he'll go away with his tail between, not barking back, not giving a look. Some people, they look very good, but inside, oh, oh you don't know what kind of monster it is inside. Then is the master is just whistling to them, to the dog to come, tail going up immediately, shaking and he comes. We're not even doing that. We're saying, you still have this sickness. If I don't prepare you for this, we're going to be punished very heavily. Because of who we're going to be next to. Maybe even Shah Vendi didn't say so many words to you. He didn't wash you up. He left you to me. Think he doesn't know that? You can turn around and say, my shaykh never did this. True, he never did. But you're not the shaykh's only murid. And he didn't train you to become a trainer. He trained a trainer. How do you know? The sunnah is not just what the prophet did or didn't do. The sunnah is what he approves or what he didn't. He disapproves. You understand? The ones who are against Hazrat Muawiyah radiallahu an, now Sunnis they're against him, then you should never have a muazin, you should never do the kamat. Because he was the first one to do it. Imam is saying Allahu Akbar, Prophet was saying it. He says Allahu Akbar so that others can hear. And Prophet turned and then smiled. And liking it, and we're continuing that. Then there are those who are given that permission even after the Prophet ﷺ had passed. Even after he had passed, he's given permission to do new things also. They say, Prophet never did this. He says, you understand Prophet? I'm sitting here, you think, what am I, chopped liver? Like they're saying to Hazrat Osman, why are you compiling the Quran? Make it into a mushaf. It's supposed to be, isn't it ikra? People are supposed to be just memorizing and putting it, but he put it in a musaf. But did the Sahabis do that? No, they didn't. Because they understood. So many things. Yeah.
What can we do? You may say, I think I am harsher than Sheriff Andy with things. You may say that. But you cannot say that I'm not trying to understand. I'm not opening the way for you to come and to understand. I may seem very impatient, but I'm, I can be patient. And I wait. When it is done, when that part of the mercy is done, now something else has to kick in. So it's not the good things. It's when the Shah is touching you. Then you know where your makam is. It's not when the Sheikh praises you. It's not when the Sheikh says, Oh, what a lion you are, mashallah. It's when the Sheikh says, You donkey. Yes, Sheikh. Huh? Because you do this, or maybe you didn't do anything, and he says, Yes, Sheikh, to you. But if you don't understand what he's doing, and you're saying, Ow, oh, it's a thorn. How dare you give me a thorn? I give you roses and give me thorn. Then I say, okay, you haven't reached that yet. I cannot use you. Shreya Fendi, one time he was crying when he was singing this ilahi, this poem, praising the Prophet ﷺ, and he's saying, may I be your kitmir, Ya Rasulullah. You know who is kitmir? The dog that followed the young ones in the cave. The seven sleepers. Allah is mentioning him. Allah is not mentioning us, He's mentioning that dog. Just because He was with them and He stood there guarding them. Oh, here it is today. L forget about putting through the grinder and to come out. <laughs> we say, sit, they get upset. We say, out, they get upset. We say, get in, they get upset. So we're not even saying anything, they get upset. Yeah, that is what is happening today. We must take lesson, you understand? Inshallah, Allah forgive us. Allah forgive me, at least. Bless you, Fatiha. Amen. Assalamu alaikum.